Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by repeatable measurements and reproducible measurements. OK, now during your GCSE science lessons, you'll carry out a number of required practicals. And one of these is the rates of reaction practical in chemistry. In this practical, you investigate how the rate of a chemical reaction is affected by the concentration of a reactant. And remember that a reactant is a chemical that takes part in a reaction. One way of doing this is by measuring the volume of a gas produced, and I'm showing you that here. We're reacting marble chips with acid, which produces the gas carbon dioxide. And we're trapping the carbon dioxide in an upturned measuring cylinder in a trough of water. We can read the volume of gas using the scale on the measuring cylinder. Now one way of doing this practical is by adding a certain concentration of acid to the marble chips and then timing how long it takes to produce a fixed volume of gas, for example 20 centimetres cubed. We can then increase the concentration of the acid and carry out the experiment again. I'm showing you a student's results here. We'll call this student A. This student used four different concentrations of acid and repeated each experiment three times. Now you'll notice that the repeats are slightly different to each other, and as we've seen, this is due to random error. However, we can see that all of the repeats follow a similar pattern. As we increase the concentration of acid, the time taken for the reaction to produce 20 centimetres cubed of gas decreases. In other words, increasing the concentration of acid increases the rate of reaction. Now, when an investigator repeats an experiment under the same conditions and gets similar results, scientists say that these measurements are repeatable. So as you can see, student A's measurements are repeatable. Now another way to measure the rate of reaction is to use the disappearing cross experiment. In this experiment, two different chemicals are mixed together in a conical flask. The conical flask is placed over a cross on a piece of paper, and the students look down through the flask to the cross. Now the reaction makes a precipitate, and this makes the liquid cloudy. And at a certain point, the liquid is so cloudy that we cannot see the cross. By timing how long it takes for the cross to no longer be visible, we can measure the rate of the reaction. We can then change the concentration of one of the reactants and carry out the experiment again. I'm showing you a student's results here. We'll call this student B. Again, you can see that there's some variation between the repeats due to random error. However, each repeat follows a similar pattern. When the student increased the concentration of the reactant, the time taken for the reaction to complete decreased. In other words, increasing the concentration increased the rate of reaction. And again, this means that student B's measurements are repeatable. So as you can see, both student A and student B achieved similar results. They both found that increasing the concentration of a reactant increases the rate of reaction. Now when we have similar results produced by different investigators with different equipment, scientists say that these measurements are reproducible. So this means that the results from both student A and student B are reproducible. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.